Namaskar. Today uh, we will be speaking about the consumer decision making process. This is the fourth module of uh, this course titled consumer behavior. In this particular module we will be uh, covering a few topics uh, which will be covered in two sessions or two hours. Uh, the various topics which we will be covering uh, will be decision making, consumer decision making, levels of consumer decision making, buying roles, the consumer decision making process and implications for a marketer. In this particular hour, uh, we will be studying the first four uh, constituents of this uh, module, uh, which is decision making, consumer decision making, levels of consumer decision making and buying roles. So, let us first start with decision making. Now, a decision is defined as choosing amongst two or more alternatives. Uh, it is actually the process of choosing an op option of uh, the available alternatives or choosing one of the available alternatives which are uh, you know there f uh, in any kind of a situation. So, with respect to a consumer we would say uh, decision making is with respect to choosing one or two brands out of the many uh, which are available in the market. Now, uh, let us first restrict our decision discussion with respect to uh, decision making. What is decision making? So, as I just said it is choosing between two or more alternatives choosing one of either two or I mean choosing one of the two or one of the four or one of the six alternatives. So, it is basically choosing an option of the few or many available. Now, uh, the decision making process is defined as a process of choosing between two or more alternatives and it is actually the selection of uh, a particular alternative out of the many choices that may be available. Now, uh, when we talk about decision making, uh, we speak of it in two perspectives. One, it is goal oriented. Okay. So, it helps you reach a desired state or a, it helps you reach an end objective or a goal. Second is, it is a problem solving process. Okay. So, uh, we start with problem and uh, we look around to look for solutions to that problem and when you are looking around uh, to you know look for solutions to the problem we find a few alternatives available. So, we choose one of the alternative we choose the best alternative which may be available and so this entire process is uh, decision making. So, uh, I mean we, we, to define the process or to define a decision making we would say one it is goal oriented two it is intended to solve a problem and so it is essentially a problem solving process trying to take advantages of opportunities trying to take fight, fight threats. So, uh, whenever we need to take advantage of opportunities or we want to fight threats in the environment or we identify a problem which is uh, currently there or may be there in future we are actually looking uh, at a state where there is a problem we are looking at the process as a problem and we are trying to solve this problem through this process called decision making. Now, when we talk about decision making there are two types of decision making. One decision making uh, one type of decision making is programmed decision making the other kind of decision making is non programmed decision making. So, let us discuss what programmed decision making and non programmed decision making is. Program decision making uh, is for problems that are routine that are regular uh, which are very simple to deal with because they are regular because they are routine uh, there are guidelines which are available to deal with such problems. Uh, we make decisions without much thought again because there is a process available there are guidelines available to solve such problems we do, do not have to put in much of physical effort or we do not have to put in much of cognitive effort. The rules already exist the process or the, the, mechan the uh, you know problem solving mechanism already exist we just have to put it in practice. So, uh, you know programmed uh, decision making is something which is very easy which is uh, quick which is less time consuming which is very less complex or very less complicated. Uh, with respect to marketing when we talk about program decision making we are speaking about decisions related to day to day purchases of routine routinized products or convenience products or uh, shopping goods you know. So, we are going to use these products regularly we are going to buy these products very frequently we are going to uh, you know consume use them consume them you know 
again go in for a purchase and use them consume so the process is going to be very regular it's going to be very frequent and that is why we say that this the, the it's a very simple process very less cumbersome very quick no not much of physical effort not much of cognitive effort not any cognitive effort at all in fact so um, these products basically are convenience goods or shopping goods and they are also low involvement purchases. Uh, what do we mean by low involvement purchases? Low involvement purchases are those which are uh, you know those goods which are low in cost, uh, they, are, they are low in terms of perceived risk, they are infrequently, uh, they, 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 are, they are very frequently purchased, uh, they are you know it is more of a habitual purchase or a routine purchase that occurs with respect to these products. So, they are also called routine purchases. So, any and all kinds of shopping goods, any and all kinds of convenience goods, these are all uh, low involvement uh, products and when we talk of uh, program decision making uh, from the marketers point of view, we are actually speaking about purchases with respect to shopping goods and convenience goods. Uh, as I just said, these uh, decisions are uh, you know habitual in nature and because they are habitual in nature, because it is a routine purchase because the consumer goes through the process again and again buying the same brand again and again buying the same product again and again uh, he there also kind of develops brand loyalty with respect to uh, these products so we have examples in the form of staples we have an example in the form of grocery items we have examples in the form of toiletries which are essentially uh, you know low involvement purchases very regular very habitual and uh, brand loyalty can could easily develop with respect to these products. Also remember it is not only loyalty which could develop, switching rate also would be very very high. So, it is very important that when a consumer faces such a kind of a problem, the marketer is ready with stocks you know in the market available to uh, for him, otherwise uh, the, the, the consumer would switch over to another uh, brand and he would just you know have to buy another brand and if he likes the other brand then he may just switch off switch over to the other brand. So, it is very crucial for a marketer that uh, with respect to such purchases he should be available at the right time and at the right place with his product and service offering. So, such decisions which are very simple uh, which are very uh, you know uh, quick we do not require any kind of an effort are all programmed decisions. So, uh, you know it is basically a, a need arises. So, in that form a consumer identifies a problem and he goes about solving this problem in a very simple uh, routine and um, you know quick manner. So, this is what we call as program decision making. There is also something called as non program decision making. In non program decision making, uh, these are problems which actually arise very suddenly. They are very unique, they are very novel and uh, this kind of a decision making is very complex in nature. Because they are novel, because they are unique in themselves, uh, processes or mechanisms to solve such problems do not exist. So, uh, the, the person has to you know go in for a lot of information search, uh, he has to go in for a lot of deliberation and a lot of thought and the process is very very complex. With respect to marketing, these are decisions uh, related to uh, purchase of products which are uh, you know high involvement purchases. So, you know opposite of low involvement is high involvement and what are high involvement purchases? High involvement purchases are those which are expensive. Uh, products, the level of perceived risk is high, they are infrequently purchased, action is irrevocable in the sense that if you go, if you purchase the product, you cannot go and return it. So, overall the level of perceived risk is high with such products. Also, they are irregularly purchased. So, uh, you know, uh, when, when we speak about non-program decision making, we are actually speaking about products which require uh, or we request to speak about such buying situations which require a lot of physical activity in terms of information search also requires a lot of cognitive effort in terms of uh, information deliberation comprehension retention and final uh, decision making in terms of marketing again uh, when we speak about speciality goods or when we speak about emergency goods they are basically non programmed uh, decision making. Of course, speciality goods are very high involving purchases. Emergency goods may not be always very high involving, but nevertheless uh, because uh, the time required to make such you know solve such problems is very short, 
uh, and the consumer has to act immediately to solve a particular need or a problem. So, in this case, uh, you know, this kind of a decision making is complex and it is something which is non programmed. Uh, examples include purchase of laptops or property, real estate or you know uh, also it could include uh, an emergency for medical services. So, or you know a kind of a immediate attention uh, in to save life all of these are actually non programmed decisions uh, and they are very very complex a lot of time and effort is uh, required to complete this particular process. Now, let us move to the second uh, you know topic in this particular module uh, which is called consumer decision making. Whenever we speak of consumer decision making, we are talking about a consumer having to choose between different products or having to choose between different brands or having to choose between different alternatives that are available. So, uh, in terms of a product or service offering, he would have to decide which of the particular products or services or which of the particular brands he has to choose from. This is essential and uh, you know this is very important because uh, resources with the consumer are limited. Okay, so, uh, keeping in mind the uh, limited resources or scarce resources and the unlimited needs and wants uh, and uh, you know uh, the un unlimited um, number of options available in the market, he has to basically decide and choose to get the best possible one. So, uh, this actually starts or initiates a process which we call decision making. Uh, whenever a consumer has a need or a want, the corollary of it is that there is a problem which he has to satisfy. Okay, so, whenever we speak of a need or a want, we are actually talking of a problem state in the minds of a consumer. It is uh, with a motive to solve this problem that he enters into the decision making process. Uh, so, when we talk of consumer decision making, we are essentially talking about a response to a problem. Okay, so, consumer decision making may be defined as a process of gathering and processing information, evaluating it and selecting the best possible option so as to solve a problem or make a buying choice. So, it is a process of gathering information, processing eva information, evaluating it and then deciding on the best possible alternative uh, so as to be able to satisfy a need or a problem, so as to be able to finally enter into a product and or brand choice. Okay. So, uh, consumer decision making basically pertains to making decisions with respect to products and service offerings and or the various brands available. Now, consumer decisions making pertain to uh, the following kinds of decisions. Okay. Uh, when, when a consumer is faced with a problem, I mean as I said, just said corollary is there is a need. So, when a person has a need or a want and the corollary of which is that there is a problem and he has to solve these problems, he enters into this decision making process. In order to solve the process, he would gather information, he would uh, you know uh, comprehend this information, evaluate uh, the different alternatives and then settle on a particular alternative which he feels is the best possible. Now, when he makes a final choice, his choice or his decision pertains to a number of questions, some of which are what to buy. So, in terms of what should I buy as a consumer, what should I buy? So, it would be in terms of products and services or it would be in terms of brands. How much to buy? So, what is should be the quantity of purchase? Where to buy? Where should I buy from? What should be the place? Should it be a small place, small store or a large outlet or should it be a normal Kirana store or a mall or should it be a physical format or in today's time could should it be a virtual format or an electronic platform. When should I buy? So, here it means the time should it be bought in, in you know at different times of the day or it is different days of the week or is it going to be on a weekend or is, or is the purchase going to be on a fortnightly basis or a monthly or a half yearly or an annually. So, when should be the when should the purchase be made and how should we buy in terms of what should be the payment terms is it going to be cash down or if it is going to be in terms of installments what are going to be the 
E and EMIs. So, all these decisions are uh, you know relate to the consumer and to uh, decisions which he has to make with respect to what to buy, how to buy, where to buy, uh, how much to buy and how to you know pay. So, all of these are important decisions which a consumer has to take and as we go about this course we will dwell upon each of these questions. Now, all of these purchase uh, decisions which are made on the part of a marketer are not similar. Okay. Just as we discussed uh, you know high involvement products and low involvement products and I just explained that uh, low involvement products the decision making will be very simple on the other hand it will be very programmed on the other hand for high involvement products it is going to be a complex process which is going to be it is actually a non programmed decision. So, depending upon the product or and service offering depending upon the amount of time available for the purchase. Okay, we will say that uh, the different kinds of products or different kinds of services would not require the same kind of physical or cognitive effort on the part of a marketer, on the part of a consumer, I am sorry. So, on in, from the consumer's point of view, when he has to purchase a laptop, his decision making process would be much different than to one when he has to purchase a toothpaste. Okay, so, the level of physical effort, the level of cognitive effort is not going to remain the same when we speak about different kinds of product and service offerings. The pro pro process is not similar, the decisions are not going to be similar. Okay, the effort that is going to be put in into each you know activity, each purchase activity uh, when we see differences across product and services offering, the amount of effort, the amount of time that will put in will be different uh, depending upon the products, depending upon the say, purchase situation. So, while the process is a f you know generally we speak about a five staged process which is you know identifying a problem, uh, searching for information, evaluating alternatives. Uh, you know decide making a purchase decision and post purchase behavior while the stages are uh, five staged uh, the amount of effort the amount of time required to complete each of these stages uh, is not going to be the same. It will vary across product and service offerings also it is going to vary across the time which is available with the consumer. Now, when let us this this brings us to the level of consumer decision making. Now, as I just said that the amount of effort, the amount of time that you are going to put in to purchase products and services are going to vary across the nature of uh, product and service offerings. So, uh, let us see, let us discuss this in terms of the levels of consumer decision making. Now, while decision making is simply defined as the selection of an alternative to solve a problem, a time and effort required to solve such problems will vary across buying situations. On a continuum or on a scale, we can classify these situations into three categories or we can classify them into three different levels of consumer decision making. We call them extensive problem solving or EPS, limited problem solving or LPS or routinized problem solving or routinized response behavior or RPS. So, we will now speak about uh, the different levels of consumer decision making in terms of EPS, LPS and RPS. As we move along, we will see that the amount of effort that a consumer will take across these levels is going to be very, very different. The amount of time he is going to spend in decision making is also going to be very, very different. So, let us first discuss uh, what extensive problem solving is. Okay. Now, in extensive problem solving, the consumer is not aware of the product or service category. He is not aware of the different brands as well. Okay. He is also not aware about number 1, the different products, the different services, the different brands, 2, the different criteria on which he has to evaluate those product or service offerings and or those brands. Okay. So, he is actually not aware about the cri decision criteria or the evaluative criteria which he is going to use to evaluate the products, he is not aware of the various brands uh, from which he has to evaluate. In most cases, such uh, goods are expensive goods. Okay, they are very infrequently purchased. Level of perceived risk is very, very high. And essentially, we are speaking of uh, goods which are um, ones of high involvement. Okay, so if you see, uh, the consumer has no idea about the product or service category. He has no idea about the various brands that exist in the market, 
and he has no idea about the various criteria which he is going to use to evaluate the different brands and uh, different alternatives which are available in the market. So, we call this extensive problem solving. Naturally, the amount of information gathering which he will have to undergo is going to be tremendous. The cognitive effort which he is going to undergo to comprehend information, retain it, store it is going to be, is going to be very, very uh, complex. And the amount of time which he is going to finally take to you know solve this problem or uh, and, you know in a way calorically to which is to decide on a product or service offering or to meet his particular need is going to be very, very the long the time that is going to take is going to be substantially long the effort that is going to put in is also going to be very very high now second we come to you know okay uh, before we move uh, we will also uh, speak about uh, the implications of uh, eps one the purchase effort involves lot of uh, you know the purchase process uh, involves lot of effort on the part of the consumer he has to gather information about the evaluative criteria or the decision rule decision criteria which he will use to evaluate the brands. He also has to get, gain information about the various brands available and he also has to finally make a choice with respect to the brands. So, first collect information about the product category so as to be able to identify the evaluative criteria or the important features which he should use to um, evaluate them. By evaluative criteria what we mean is these are criteria or these are features or attributes uh, or benefits which a consumer uh, which which is which are valuable to the consumer and which he will use as parameters or as standards to evaluate against different brands. So, one the consumer has to collect a lot of information with respect to uh, the product or service category so that he can identify the evaluative criteria. Two, he has to collect a lot of information about the various brands or various alternatives available and three <coughs> He also has to finally make a choice with respect to the product or service offering. As I just said, uh, these are goods of high involvement. Uh, also, they are first time purchases. Okay, so uh, you know, for example, if you're buying a laptop for the first time, okay, uh, and you're absolutely new to this particular product category, you don't, you're not aware of a laptop at all, or uh, you know, even a computer. If you're buying a computer for the first time and nobody in your family has ever had a computer or owned a computer and you do not know anything about how, what, what are the various attributes or features or characteristics on which you should be evaluating them, uh, you are basically talking of an EPS. Other examples of EPS may be with respect to electronic goods or jewelry or real estate and property. So, all of these are, will require tremendous amount of effort in terms of uh, you know collecting information and then evaluating it and there is a amount, tremendous amount of physical and cognitive activity that a consumer will have to undergo. So, this is what we mean by extensive problem solving. Now, let us come to the second which is limited problem solving. Now, in limited problem solving the uh, consumer is familiar about the product or service category, okay, but he is unaware of the various brands that are available. Okay. So, uh, you know he is he has some idea about the product or service category, he is aware about the uh, some of the evaluative criteria or different uh, you know parameters which may be used to evaluate the different brands, but he is unaware of all the brands they may be existing. So, what this uh, he is aware of some brands, he is aware of the evaluative criteria which exist, but he may not be fully aware of the newer brands which have entered of late. Okay, or he is not basically aware of uh, you know newer models which have entered into the market. Even if he is aware of these models, even if he is aware of various alternatives, he has yet not prioritized his preferences. He has not yet said yes, this brand is better than that. So this process uh, involves the, the limited problem solving basically involves gaining information about upda sorry updating information about the various brands or about the various models and then prioritizing your preferences or arranging your uh, the various brands in order of preference. So, the effort uh, which actually uh, uh, is required ranges from say about low to moderate, this low to moderate amount of activity with respect to physical activity in terms of collecting or gathering data or gathering information and again low to moderate effort in terms of cognitive effort uh, which is um, you know just trying to evaluate the various brands and arrange them in order of preference. 
So, the result of uh, LPS or a limited problem solving is that the purchase process becomes more of a recurring purchase and it um, you know it's, it requires a limited effort on the part of the marketer. In fact, uh, many of our second time purchases of high involvement products will also fall into LPS although they are high involving, but the very fact that we have bought them earlier. Okay, means we have some experience with the product and service or service category, and so um, the amount of effort which will be required on a second purchase of the same product is going to be lesser. So uh, he, you know, he just has to consumer just basically has to update his knowledge, update his um, update and modify the existing base of knowledge in his memory, and then he has to take a decision. He just has to uh, you know uh, you know update his database and. Uh, then decide or order out his preferences with respect to the various brands. Now, the types of products or the situations where we generally have LPS are the goods which are of low involvement. So, low involvement here meaning they are moderately priced or they are they are you know bought frequently bought, but not very frequently bought and there is lesser amount of risk. These are generally as I said recurring purchases. Okay. Now, um, as I said a little while ago that uh, even if you are for example, you are buying a laptop for the second time. Okay, so, uh, you have an idea about a laptop which you purchased say 8 years ago. So, now you want a second laptop for yourself or you want a second uh, refrigerator for yourself. Okay, so, you already have some idea about the product category, you already have some idea about evaluative criteria. You just need to know more about the brands or more about the newer models that have you know entered the marketplace and you have to just finally, uh, arrange them in order of preference. So, this is what we mean by LPS or limited problem solving the amount of effort required would be low to moderate. Then we speak about the RPS or the routinized per problem solving it is also called as routinized response behavior. Now, here the consumer is very well informed he is very well experienced with the product category he knows about the various features on which he has to evaluate brands he knows about the different brands which are available he, he has been using these products or these brands very frequently and the purchase has been uh, more in terms of a routine purchase that is why they are called routinized uh, purchases or routinized response behavior. So, the consumer is aware of both the decision rule criteria on which he has to evaluate brands he is aware of the different brands and uh, the purchase is actually a repetition or a repetitive purchase or a routine purchase uh, products and which fall into this cat you know, category would be a you know a low involvement products which are inexpensive very frequently bought level of perceived risk is very high very low. So, level of perceived risk is very very low and uh, he just has to go ahead uh, and you know just go to the store and ask for another uh, brand of uh, another piece of the same brand which he has been buying. So, in most cases he is going to repeat his brand. So, it is going to be a repetitive purchase with respect to both the product as well as the brand and uh, it also means some level of uh, brand loyalty, but one, one must remember that because these products are you know uh, routinized purchases they are used by us on a regular basis uh, you know the, the, the you know the rate of switching may also be very very high in, in, in terms that if a particular product or a toothpaste is not available uh, the person has two options he either asks for another brand or he goes to another store and so, so in both cases business gets lost. Okay. Say for example, I uh, want a you know a television and I go uh, to the Sony shop and ask for a particular you know model and if that is not available I will probably be willing to wait for, uh, for, for a week or 10 days till it gets delivered to me. But for a product like a uh, toothpaste I, I mean which I use say I use Colgate Total and uh, you know I go to the store and ask for a tot Colgate Total it is a routine purchase because I have been buying Colgate Total again and again I am brand loyal and I just ask for a Colgate Total. But in case Colgate Total is not available I am not going to be waiting for Colgate Total to arrive and then you know I will purchase what I am going to do is either I ask for a Pepsodent or I ask I, I leave the store and go into another store looking for a Colgate if I do not find it out there also I immediately buy a Pepsodent. So, and if I like Pepsodent Okay, I may just switch over to Pepsodent. So, it is very important for a marketer that he should not be able ignoring low involvement purchases at all. Switching behavior can be very very high. Okay. 
Now, as we said the result of a, routine, a routinized problem solving is that is absolutely no effort required on the part of the consumer. Um, you know it is a routine purchase, the process is completed very quickly, uh, purchases are just made out of habit and brand loyalty. And um, examples include uh, cold drinks or stationary items or toiletries. So, these are all uh, products which actually fall into uh, the category of routine problem solving. So, if we compare uh, you know the LPS, EPS and RPS, uh, let us see for example, the complexity of decision making uh, in extensive problem solving is very, very high. That of uh, in LPS is medium and that in RPS is very low. So, if you see on a continuum the complexity is extremely high in the case of extensive problem solving and low in the case of routinized problem solving. Uh, time taken to make decisions if of course, when uh, we are going to spend a lot of time making decisions in extensive problem solving, uh, time taken to make decisions in the case of uh, limited problem solving will be low to high and in the case of routinized problem solving it is going to be very, very low. Uh, amount of information which we gather uh, in terms of for EPS is high, it's, yes a lot of uh, you know information gathering we will have to do, uh, LPS also we will have to gather some information which will pertain to newer brands or newer models or newer features uh, and of course, while prioritizing them we would need some, while prioritizing the different brands we would need some information. So, we have to collect information for LPS as well, but for RPS there is no need for gathering any information. Information sources for EPS would be many, for LPS would be few and for RPS would be few or none. Okay. Now, uh, in terms of uh, decision criteria and in terms of eval alternative brands available, uh, the level of awareness and knowledge which a consumer uh, would uh, you know have to possess. Uh, with respect to EPS, he would absolutely have no idea about the decision criteria. In LPS, he may have some idea about the evaluative criteria like the attributes, benefits, features uh, which uh, will be used for evaluation. Uh, in RPS also he would be aware of these criteria, but in terms of uh, knowledge about alternative brands being available, in EPS the consumer would absolutely have no idea about the brands available, in LPS he would have some idea, but in RPS he would definitely have all the idea. So, he would be aware, no aware of he would be aware of the different brands which are available in the market. As far as evaluative criteria is concerned. Um, in extensive problem solving, the evaluative criteria are going to be complex, in LPS they would be moderate and in RPS if at all they are going to be very, very simple. Brands considered in EPS will be many, in the case of LPS will be few and in case of uh, RPS uh, they are going to be just one which is going to be a repeat purchase as we said the consumer is going to be essentially brand loyal. Okay. And cognitive dissonance um, is something which we will be discussing uh, later on, but I will make very brief mention about what cognitive dissonance is. Uh, whenever a particular consumer buys a product and uh, brings it home, he begins to fail, uh, feel a uh, you know, certain level of anxiety and uneasiness as to whether uh, the decision which he has made with respect to the product or service offering has been the right one or not. Okay. He, he feels very uneasy as to uh, and unsure about you know the outcome of his decision. He, he's very, he gets into a state of disequilibrium with respect to have I made the right choice, have I spent uh, money on the right alternative. So, uh, this is in fact this feeling is image it comes about immediately after a purchase even before a person has actually begun to consume that particular product or service offering. So, the, the results are yet to come in, but uh, the results or the performance is yet to happen, but uh, you know the consumer begins to have this level of anxiety immediately on purchase. This feeling or this feeling of uneasiness or tension or anxiety with respect to having made the right decision or not is referred to as cognitive dissonance. Okay. So, uh, the, the level of cognitive dissonance which a consumer will face 
uh, with respect to extensive problem solving will be very very high because the amount of money which he has spent is going to be is more is the product is expensive level of perceived risk is also very very high and the product is something uh, which uh, is bought now and is not going to be frequently purchased it is also something where action is irrevocable he can't go and return the product okay so uh, the level of cognitive dissonance is extremely high on the other hand in case of lps because uh, these are recurring purchases i mean it's a second purchase uh, the level of uh, cognitive dissonance generally is moderate if at all or it's very rare but in the case of rps there is going to be no uh, dissonance at all you know you are so used to using a soap or a toothpaste and you go and ask and even if you have switched on your behavior and chosen brand uh, pepsodent over colgate you would not face this kind of a dissonance because the product is a low involvement product it's not very expensive you know it's going to get over soon and you'll soon have to buy another one so you're not stuck with that product or service from for a longer time okay so this is how we compare eps lps and rps we could also compare uh, eps lps and rps on a few more parameters uh, let us see let us discuss them in terms of consumer involvement so uh, consumer involvement is actually defined in terms of uh, the level of interest and the intensity with which a person approaches a product or service category okay so uh, people some people are involved with some kinds of product categories some are involved with other kinds of product categories uh, generally speaking people are hi highly involved in high involvement product categories because as i just said level of perceived risk is very very high okay so we shall be discussing consumer involvement later on in the course of this course but at the at this particular time what i what i would just like to say is that when we define involvement we speak of it in terms of the level of intensity with which a person approaches the marketplace for the a purchase of a product or service offering it also relates to the level of interest which he possesses with respect to that product or service category so uh, when we talk about involvement uh, and we talk about consumer involvement it's going to be very high uh, in terms of eps it's going to be medium for lps and it's going to be low for rps we can also uh, speak of you know we can also compare eps lps and rps on the five basis of the five stages of the decision making process i just mentioned to you the five stages of the decision making process which is problem recognition information search evaluation of alternatives purchase and post purchase processes so if we compare uh, the the three levels of decision making on each of these five stages of consumer decision making we will see that uh, problem recognition in eps is an actual state type to a desired state type okay so uh, you know that means a consumer wants to move from one product to uh, an upgrade himself to a higher product okay or a higher you know upper brand uh, from a lower or uh, priced brand to a upper priced brand or from one model of um, you know a mobile to say an imp improvised or a better mod model in a mobile similarly in lps also the problem recognition is with respect to actual state type to desired state type that means the consumer wants to move from one uh, to another uh, brand because he wants to upgrade himself okay he wants a better product or he wants a better service uh, but in cases of rps uh, because uh, you know it's a you know, routine purchase uh, it's basically an actual state type of a problem the consumer reacts only when the product is you know the stocks are depleted or the product is not you know the the product is not working it is damaged or you know immediate replacement is required uh, information search in the case of eps is extensive both internal and external sources of information are looked into in the cases of lps information search is limited and mostly restricted to internal sources in the case of rps it is again it's very minimum restricted only to internal sources what we mean by internal sources is our memory coming to evaluation of alternatives in eps uh, uh, it's a very complex process in lps it's a moderate 
you know uh, moderate um, it, uh, the alternatives are evaluated with moderate effort and in the case of rps uh, you know there is hardly any evaluation of alternatives because it's a routine purchase the habitual purchase people are brand loyal even if there is an evaluation it's going to be very very simple uh, purchase the next uh, pro stage in the decision making process is purchase so in eps the purchase is very gradual after a long cognitive effort after a long amount of time after a substantial amount of time is effort is, is time is spent in physical effort or cognitive effort so the process is very gradual after a cognitive process and in the case of lps it is not so gradual but in case of rps the purchase is immediate hardly any thinking hardly any cognitive effort and so you just have to go to the market and buy so it's a more of a physical effort and purchase is absolutely immediate post purchase processes as we just said cognitive dissonance is going to be very high in the case of extensive problem solving if the consumer gets uh, satisfied with the purchase it's going to develop into brand loyalty in the case of limited problem solving dissonance is going to be very rare in the case of routinized is going to be no dis or no uh, dissonance at all it's a repeat purchase consumers are very brand loyal and are extremely confident about the brand that they purchase so there is no question of any uneasiness or any anxiety after having purchased a particular brand finally we come to the types of goods we could also compare uh, you know eps lps and rps on the types of goods uh, eps is basically uh, with respect to specialty goods lps is with respect to mixed goods you know different kinds of goods be it shopping goods convenience goods even some specialty goods which are recurring purchase repeat second purchase of a specialty good and in case of rps it's going to be more of convenience goods okay now this brings us to the next uh, topic in this particular session which is buying rules okay so as we've just seen the consumer decision process is going to be a very uh, you know complex process and uh, you know we have a five staged process which we shall be discussing in length in the next session and uh, different people have different roles to play across these entire uh, buying process on entire consumer decision process the amount the the the, the you know the actual purchase is just a physical activity is just uh, you know uh, one a visible part of the entire process much goes into uh, much goes into the process before this final act of purchase actually happens there's a lot of cognitive effort there are a lot of amount of a considerable amount of influences considerable amount of thought processes that go into this entire process uh, we should not miss the impact of the influences which are you know which actually exerted upon the decision making process the the consumer's decision with respect to a product or service offering is impacted by a number of you know forces in the environment number of influences in the environment we have discussed some of these influences in our previous classes but uh, here uh, when we are talking about influences on decision making a, a great amount of influence is exerted by the social influences in terms for example the members of a family or the friends around you or your peers or your work colleagues so uh, when we talk about the buying process we speak about something called the buying roles and uh, you know these buying roles are five in number we, we say that there could be five buying roles in a b to c scenario or a business to consumer market scenario we have five buying roles these roles are initiator influencer decider buyer and user now the marketer has to understand all of these roles because each of these roles is very important i have made mention of these roles in my first and second session as well first and second session of consumer behavior i did make mention of these roles but why these roles are important to the marketer is i repeat because each and every role has a function to perform okay so we'll go through these roles and we'll uh, study them with an example okay now when we speak about these roles the initiator is the person who identifies a need okay he is the one who's going to first suggest uh, the idea of buying a particular product or service offering he is the one who is going to say yes this is what we want or this is a need or there is a problem which needs to be sorted out 
okay so either it is in terms of identification of a need or it is in terms of a corollary of it is solving a problem it is both going to come uh, it's going to be both initiated from this role which is the initiator's role okay so uh, it's an important role for the marketer because this is the role which is going to begin the decision making process it's going to initiate the need for the beginning of the decision making process the second role is that of a influencer the influencer is one who is going to influence the buyer okay he is going to influence the buyer in making the purchase decision this is the brand you must buy this is the brand you must not buy these are the brands which you should consider okay or this is a better brand than that so the influencer basically is going to be exerting an influence either you know through word of mouth or through a you know an a, a deliberate as a, either through a word of mouth or through as an answer to a deliberate question asked by the initiator okay say for example one influence can be in terms of uh, you know saying that yes i i have a product i i have a need i want this particular product can you suggest which one should i buy so the initiator as an active you know part contacts the influencers and tries and gets information from them another influence could be in terms of uh, okay these five uh, roles are initiator influencer decider buyer and user and let us explain each of these roles with an example the initiator is one who is going to identify a particular need or Uh, the corollary of which could be identify a problem which needs to be solved so he is the one who is going to first suggest the idea that a product or service offering needs to be purchased he is the one who is going to say we have a need which needs to be satisfied or there is a problem that needs to be solved the second role is that of a influencer influencer is the person who is going to influence the buyer okay it's a social influence it's not a marketer's influence it's a social influence because we are talking about buying roles the third role is that of a decider who's going to basically just make a decision with respect to the final choice which is the brand which i should buy what is to be bought when it is to be bought how it is to be bought uh, how am i going to make the payment so all of this is going to come from the decider the fourth role is that of a buyer the buyer is the one who is going to enter into the physical transaction or who is going to enter into the physical activity of making a purchase and the user is a person who is going to actually consume the product or use the product or service offering okay now all of these roles are important for a marketer the initiator is the one who is going to start the process the influencer is the one who is going to uh, you know have an impact on, on whether uh, you know positive is said about your brand or positive is said about your competitor's brand so an influencer is equally important for a marketer the decider is important okay the buyer is extremely important because the actual purchase transaction is going to happen by the buyer at home as a decider uh, you know the father may have thought of buying a brand uh, y of a television but uh, when the son goes to the store he may end up buying brand z because uh, probably that looked better in appeal or had better features or probably was on a discount so what actually matters to the marketer is the decider that is who is the one who is actually making a purchase or entering into the final transaction it may so happen that a person may decide to buy something but ends up buying nothing when he reaches the store he does not buy anything or he postpones his purchase for future so uh, who is more important for a marketer it is the buyer because buyer is the one who is going to actually you know you know translate his need or want into a purchase and from the marketer's point of view it is going to be the demand okay so the the decider would only present an intention to purchase but it is the buyer who is actually going to enter into this purchase okay and the fifth role is that of the user which is the people who are going to actually consume the product now the user is also important because as a as a with the for the current moment decider is important but for the future for future purchases for recurring purchases for repeat purchases it is the users who are important based on the satisfaction or dissatisfaction levels of the user uh, is going to be uh you know the decision with respect to the next purchase if the user is satisfied with that particular brand 
you know, chances are you will buy it again. The person with the marketer can understand that yes, loyalty may develop. But in case the buyer is dissatisfied and does not like your product, then he is definitely going to go in for a change of brand the next time. So, uh, both buyer and uh, uh, user are very, very important. Now, let us discuss these with the help of an example. Uh, there is a girl who wants to buy crayons to use in class. Um, she, she is studying in the KG class. So, who is the initiator? The girl herself. Influencers could be her teacher or her classmates. If the teacher um, you know, writes a note in the copy uh, or in the book, of the child and sends it home and she writes she writes in the note that please send a pack of colored pencil or crayons with your child the next day so she and it should be brand y okay so she is the influencer okay in case the you know um, child says that no i want crayons but i want crayons like what my friend has so in that case the influencer is the friend so, you have initiator in form of the girl who comes home and asks for a set you know packet of crayons. Uh, the influencer it could be the teacher who has asked them to buy a particular brand or uh, you know the influencer could also be the fellow student who, whom, whom this girl has observed using a particular kind of color pencils. The decider would be either of the parents, uh, the buyer would be either the parents or a sibling and the user is the girl herself. Another example we can see is the mother of a house, mother in the house is a housewife, she loves watching TV and when her husband and children go to work, she, she, you know, she loves watching TV at that time. So, she has been complaining that the present TV set at home has been giving a problem, the model is old now and she wants a new one and they say that the family should be owning a new model. So, the initiator here is the mother of the family or the lady, uh, influencers are could be her neighbors and friends. So, she says she wants a television, a plasma screen like the neighbor has. So, who is the influencer here? The influencer becomes the neighbor. The decider could be joint, it could be either uh, she or her husband or her children uh, and the buyer uh, would be again uh, the husband or the son or the daughter or she herself goes and buys it and the user is the family. Now, what we have to understand here very important is that these five roles may be played by one person or many persons. In other words, a person may assume more than one role. Okay. Also, the role that one assumes in a particular product purchase uh, will differ from the role that is purchased uh, that, is, that is played in another product purchase. In other words, uh, for a particular product purchase and in a particular product situation, role will differ with respect to another product purchase or another purchase situation. Okay. So, uh, the role for example, a role uh, played by uh, you know for the if you know for example, if we want to talk about electronic items, uh, the role played may be uh, you know the decider role may be played by the um, you know the, the father or the son, but if it is a grocery item or if it is a kitchen item, in all cases uh, probable cases the decider role would be played either by the mother or the daughter of the family. Okay. So, people are going to assume different roles in different product and service situations, a purchase of different product and service situations. Now, as far as buyer behavior is concerned, uh, the buyer's role is the most important. Okay. It is because it is he who enters into the final exchange, actual decision is taken by him at the time of the purchase. Okay. So, uh, you know the decider may make a choice, but the exchange is actually entered by the buyer. So, the buyer's role is the most important role amongst these five roles. And as I said, uh, some amount of importance uh, also has to be given to the user because subsequent purchases are going to be based on uh, the experience of the user or the users. However, this is not to say that the other roles are not important. The other roles are equally important from, for a marketer, but from consumer behavior point of view, the, the, the major role is played, uh, you know, the, ma the most important roles are played by the buyer and the user. This brings us to an end of session 1 of module 4. Let us look at the references for further reading. Kotler and Keller Marketing Management 13th edition Pearson, Loudon and Della Bitta uh, Consumer Behavior Tata McGraw-Hill, Peter and Olson uh, Consumer Behavior and Marketing Strategy McGraw-Hill, Schiffman and Canoe Consumer Behavior Prentice Hall and Wells and Trensky Consumer Behavior John Wiley. 
uh, what could be frequently asked questions, uh, what are the various buying roles explain with an example. So, you explain the five buying roles, uh, you know what define consumer decision making, we have already discussed this in length and compare and contrast the various levels of consumer decision making. So, you compare um, the LPS, EPS and RPS. Let us come to a short quiz. Uh, true and false with respect to marketing program decisions are related to infrequent uh, purchases or speciality goods and emergency goods. Well, this is a false statement. Question 2 in case of LPS brand loyalty is high, it is false, it is in case of RPS that brand loyalty is high. Uh, third question as far as buyer behavior is concerned the user's role is the most important false again it is the buyer's role which is the most important. Let us come to multiple choice questions. So, uh, the multiple choice questions uh, question 1 which of the following statements about RPS is true complexity of decision making is low sources of information are both internal and external these are speciality goods and consumer has not narrowed down the priorities amongst brands. So, uh, the first statement is the only statement which is true which is con complexity of decision making is low. Question number 2 uh, which of the following statements is true in LPS the consumer is aware of some brands and also of the various criteria used to evaluate the product or service offering. He is unaware of the new brands that have been introduced he has not evaluated the brands amongst his awareness set and has not established preferences. Well, uh, and D is all of the above. So, the answer here is D all of these statements are true. Fill in the blanks brand loyalty is indicative of dash decision making brand loyalty is indicative of program decision making. In case of dash problem solving the consumer is aware of both decision criteria as well as various brands available. So, in case of routinized problem solving the consumer is available of both the decision criteria as well as various brands. Short questions mention the five buying roles initiator, influencer, decider, buyer and user mention the two types of decision making programmed and non programmed three kinds of problem solving EPS, LPS and RPS and then you have to differentiate between LPS and EPS. This brings us to the conclusion of the uh, this brings us to the conclusion of session 1 of module uh, uh, module 4. So, we shall continue with session 2 uh, in the next slot. Uh, I hope you have benefited from this session. Thank you.